Welcome back to the classroom. So now we were talking about energy changes on objects going through uniform circular motion. Uh, this part of the video will be going through those calculation questions that we skipped over in the theory component. So let's have a look. Okay, so the very first question we have is we have a 50 kilogram car that drives um, down at this particular speed in a circular dip. So trying to imagine what that looks like, we have our dip down here and we have a car that's moving down and it's at the very point here, this bit here, okay? It says, calculate the centripetal force and normal force on the driver and determine if the apparent weight of the driver increases or decreases. So let's have a look at our force diagram here. Just brush it all out. So let's say the object is so this is the object's circular motion, right? Well, the centripetal force is pointing up, okay? It's pointing up like so. The normal force, we do it on the side, is pointing up. The gravitational force is pointing down. What we need to firstly work out, because our net force is also our centripetal force, equals to the normal force plus uh, Fg, we need to firstly work out um, if our, you know, net force, what is our net force firstly? Okay, so mv squared over r, 50 times 8 squared over 2.5, what do we have? So 1,280 newtons equals to our gravitational force. So this is our centripetal force, right? So that answers one of our questions. Plus our gravitational force, which is 50 times negative 9.8. The reason being is because the negative direction is going to be my, or the down direction is my negative direction. So the normal force is equal to 1280 negative value here. So negative 49490. Moving this over, we need it. Add, so it becomes plus 490. So we get a force of 1770 newtons. So if my normal force is larger than my gravitational force, that means the apparent weight force that I experience at the bottom of this dip is also higher or increased. Let's try another one. So we have the same 50 kg cart drive up a hump. So the car's up here. Now in this case, the centripetal force is pointing down. The gravitational force is also pointing down and then we have our normal force pointing up still okay so same scenario but our centripetal force is in the opposite direction from last question again let's try and find the centripetal force So 50 times 2 meters square, that. So I'll just show my working out. Eighty newtons. So 80 newtons equals to the normal force 
plus our weight force, which is negative 490 again. So our normal force is, oh, our centripetal force is also negative because it's in the opposing direction of our normal force. So our normal force is 410 newtons. Now our normal force is smaller than our gravitational force. So our apparent weight is decrease in this scenario here. That's how you do those questions related to our force diagrams. Be really confident in drawing one of these because it will definitely help your you know, understanding of the question. All right, the next question we're going to look at is loop the loop. So this is now in the considerations of um, energy. Okay, so I'm just going to swap to another page where I have more space to write. We have a toy car of 150 grams released from rest. So we know from that the initial velocity is zero. From a height of one meter, so that's the original height with a vertical loop of radius 20 centimeters here. Okay. What I want to show you firstly, let's just say, for example, our car is now here later on. We can talk about this later on here. So I'll just leave that there. Let's go through the calculations. So it says calculate the speed of the car as it reaches the bottom of the loop at y. Um, what we know is, and we can do our little calculations. So we know that the kinetic energy, one initial potential energy initial equals to kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. We know in this situation, kinetic energy is going to be zero because that's stated at the top here. We know also the gravitational potential when we reach point Y is also zero, assuming that that's our zero point. So all we're considering is the gravitational potential at this point here, MGH, and the kinetic energy when we finally reach the bottom down here. So if I rearrange the equation, it would be V is a square of 2GH as these M's will cancel out. So 2 times 1.8 times the height of 1. So let's have a look what velocity we get at the end there we get a velocity of approximately 4.43 meters per second when we reach this point at y. Okay. Calculate the normal reaction force from the track at point y. Now this is where you need to try and interpret um, drawing the vector diagrams. So at point y here, the centripetal force is going up gravitational force is coming down and our normal force is going up like so. Okay. Firstly, let's work out what our centripetal force is. Okay. So it's going to be centripetal force equals to normal force plus gravitational force. We're going to say that up is our positive direction. Okay. So normal force equals to centripetal subtracted by gravitational force. We know that the centripetal force is mv squared over r. So I'm just going to substitute the numbers in this one because we're rounding out of space. Uh, but obviously if you can try and do the complete uh, working out, don't be lazy on that one. We know that the velocity is 4.43 and the radius it's traveling is 20 centimeters. 
So we have a centripetal force of roughly 4.7. Subtract that by our gravitational force, which is 1.47. And so the normal force is approximately 13.23 newtons. Okay, so that's our normal force. What's the speed of the car when it reaches Z? Okay, so this one's slightly different now. And let's have a look. So when we're at point Z, we're no longer at a height of zero. Okay, the change in position of our height here to here would be 40 centimeters because the radius is 20. Okay, so we will have some kind of potential energy uh, when we are at point Z. Another thing I want to also look into is with our car here, its centripetal force is going down, its normal force is also going down, and its gravitational force is also going down. So this is one of the few scenarios where your um, normal force is going in the same direction as your gravitational force. Because remember, so long as the object makes contact with a surface, that normal force is going to be 90 degrees to that contact. So in this case where it's upside down, that's where the normal force will be. Okay, so let's do the calculation speed of the car. So if I just write the equation we're dealing with, mgh1 equals to mv squared plus mgh2. This is the equation we're going to use again because there's no kinetic energy here. If we rearrange um, the formulas around, we'll find that we can just write this equation like so. Okay, so it'll be MGH1 subtracted by MGH2 equals to half mv squared. Okay, if we then times both sides by two, so mv squared, so mv squared equals to two mgh1 minus mgh2, and then divided by, well, Looks like we'll have to use a bit more space over here, so apologies. Okay. So mv squared equals to 2. We can also move this m out because it's the same mass. We can move it out of the bracket. And we get mgh1 minus gh2. Okay. We could even move the g out because it's the same um, acceleration due to gravity. But the reason why I'm doing this is so when I divide this m, I can cancel this m out. So it just becomes 2 gh1 minus gh2. And then square root of that. So if I substitute all the values in, in which case it's 2, 9.8 times 1, subtracted by 9.8 times 40 centimeters, so 0 0.4. Let's see what answer we get. We get a value of 3.43 approximate if we do it to three sig figs, meters per second. So that's the speed the car is at, at point Z. Let's have a look at the normal force. So this is one of the weird uh, situations where everything is in the same direction. So 
f net is equal to f n plus f g. Um, we want to find what f net is. We can certainly work out what the value for the centripetal force is. We had that from before. Let's see what that was. So we will need to find a new centripetal force. So let's just scrub this bit out and find the new centripetal force at point Z. Okay, so FC at Z, MV square over R, our mass has not changed. Our velocity has its 3.43 square and the radius of our motion is um, 20 centimeters. Okay, so make sure we convert that into meters. Okay, so our centripetal force is approximately 8.82 newtons. So our normal force is our net force subtracted by our gravitational force. 8.82 subtracted by uh, our gravitational force, which is... 1.47. Notice how um, even though we're going down in this scenario, I didn't bother writing the subtraction signs just because I know they're all in the same direction, so I didn't really bother. We get a value of 7.35 newtons, but just so we demonstrate to people where you know the normal force is, we're going to do a downwards arrow to demonstrate it's going down. Okay. So that's how you go through this question. There was another example we can go through, but that would just make this video very long and it's quite a similar question to what we have here. So I will let you be with that. If you're feeling comfortable with doing all the calculations that we've done so far in this, um, this lesson, please have a go at the 2019 physics paper, question 30. Uh, this is on quite a similar idea of changes in energy as an object is undergoing uh, circular motion, as you can see with our circular track. So please have a go at this question. Really see, uh, test yourselves, test your skills out and see if you feel comfortable with doing this. Um, thank you for watching this video. I know the two videos were a little bit long, but hopefully now you understand the theory of energy changes in circular motion and also uh, feel comfortable enough to do those kind of calculations. Anyways, uh, if you like the video, uh, give it a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and see you next time.